Hello and welcome back. I'm LIGO and this is episode 25 of my life in Football Manager. And it's our first day as Sunderland Manager. So we're going to dive in, assess the club, assess the squad and figure out our plans going forward. And if you want to follow along with this, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below to follow the Sunderland chapter of my life in Football Manager. So first things first, let's have a look at the key people in the squad. We've got Ben Close, he's our current captain. Looks to be a deep line playmaker, can play in the defensive midfield or central midfield. 28 years old, reasonable leadership, not, not the best. Professional um, personality, so that's good. Vice-captain Callum Camps, another central midfielder, a little more attacking by the look of this. And again, not great leadership, so maybe that's where Sunderland have been struggling. And as you notice, they're only three and a two and a half star player. Key player, I've had a look at him already, Oren Cahill, on loan from Derby. I've put a bid in to try and get him back again because whether it's a ball winning midfielder or as a central defender, he looks to be the best player by miles at this club at the moment. And a central defender that can defend and he's as fast as lightning as well that would be very handy. And lastly, let's go have a look at our hot prospect, Mackenzie Osborne. Probably won't get a lot of game time, but one to keep an eye on, two star current ability. Five star potential ability. So, foundations of the squad currently look like this. If we've got a team report and where am I, squad depth. So, that's looking for all positions. I think I'm going to continue on with the 4 2 3 1 that we were playing at Telford, which the squad looks like this could do with a keeper. We've got current keeper Chris Maxwell, 34 year old probably see him more as a backup keeper to be honest if we can bring a young keeper in that can be mentored by him across the back line we've got bradford and tyler algar who both are young left backs both showing lots of potential so got competition there they're not the best in the league but i think with a bit of game time they'll come on strong center backs we've got good strength here we've got Cahill. should he come back we've got farigra and then we've got Feeney and Cooper as well, Monogna, however you pronounce that, he's going to be our right back, along with I think Josh Hare, um, probably an area that we could strengthen. We then look into the centre of midfield, if I just take Cahill out of both of these, this is where we don't quite have much quality, we've got uh, Kasumu who wants to be either box to box or more likely a deep line playmaker. Chris Thorne, who's a player with bags of potential, so I think he's going to get a good shot of the game this year. Box-to-box -box midfielder, likes to get forward, and he's got plenty of stamina, could work on his physical attributes, but he's only 18 years old, that might come this season. Then as we've seen Ben Close already, and then that's really it, we haven't got much quality, so I think centre of midfield needs strengthening. And then another area that we do need to strengthen is out wide, we've got no quality at all out wide. Camps we've seen really can play anywhere but he's going to be an attacking midfielder daily is apparently a striker according to the media but doesn't really show much quality anywhere george nunn who was actually online at bolton this year and terrorized us in one of the games earlier on he looks to be our best striker at the club which is worrying um, because the other strike we've got is jay stansfield he was a player that scored 12 goals in 37 appearances. Not entirely certain if I want to keep him around. And the other reason that is because I want to do uh, gag and press. Looks like the team's well built for work rate, teamwork and aggression. So that's where I'm thinking at the moment. And then the other side, right hand side, still no quality there. And then Ethan Chislett looks to be our best attacking midfielder I think so. Midfield is where we need to strengthen the most, I think, and definitely a striker. So plenty of work to do with this team. And if I go to the tactics, this is what I'm initially thinking. If you ignore the players in the positions, that was just to give me an idea of who my best players are currently at the club. But as you can see, you're going to stick with a 4-2-3-1. Press high up the field, counter and counter press in transition. And look to overlap down this right-hand side, try and get... Um, Similar player to Penn last year, somebody that could chip in with plenty of assists. So that's the current plan. I'll get some scouting done, get the players in on trial for the 1st of July, 
because we're still not there yet so we've still got release day to come and i'll check back in with you on the 1st of july so we've reached the 1st of july and things haven't quite gone to plan firstly we weren't able to get oran cahill back in on loan derby want to keep him for their first team but if i come to the transfers we've got a few going on but it's a history where things are a little bit more exciting. There's no ins on last year's. But we've got a couple of outs. We've got Andrew Townley has gone out on loan. Zach Dromfield, he, I think his contract was expiring, but we've let him go anyway. Got him off the wage bill. Paul Baldwin, another young player that's gone out on loan. Jan Songoa, player that was really fringe player. As you can see, he's showing on our scouting reports now as a 31 seventh best in the defensive midfield role really wasn't going to be featuring so he's moved on to Accrington and then Mackenzie Dicchio has gone out on loan and if we tick it over to this season Adam Richardson has also gone on loan to Telford we've boosted their goalkeeping uh, ranks so hopefully that'll do them a little bit of a favour for letting me go and then we've got three additions so far Ryan Murray a young player one with bags of potential, maybe not quite ready for first team action, but can play at either side or up front, so he should be exciting. Charlie Brett is coming from Burnley, free transfer, attacking at right back. Another young player, two and a half star current ability, five star potential, so maybe another one for the future, but can definitely be a backup in the squad. And the most promising transfer so far, Taylor Perry has come in, he looks to be ready for the first team, a true box to box midfielder, can play anywhere in the midfield or across the front three maybe not quite the physical presence five foot eleven ten strength so not the physical imposing midfielder that we want but he is decent at tackling he is going to work hard and looking at his stats he's reasonably balanced for going back and forth so should be a good addition to the team so if we just go to the finances the impact of that looks like this we've still got 12 and a half million uh, euros transfer budget which i doubt we're going to use but it's there if we need it Still got 20, 30,000 euros roughly on the wage budget, so plenty of options to move around there. So plenty of work to do. But the good news is we've got time and finances on our side. So I'll continue on towards the first game of the season and I'll check back in before we get there and update you with our transfer progress. So I've played on until the 1st of August. And I just wanted to start with this screen because the media are showing that we are expected to finish second this year. So that doesn't necessarily tie in with the board's expectations of mid-table. But the indication is obviously we've got a squad good enough to challenge for the top of the league. Now, since I last left you, I have been busy. The only thing is, you're all going to think I'm mad because out of the 12 million euro budget, I've spent exactly two. But not two million. <laughs> 2000 euros that was it so let's go have a look at the transfers let's go to the transfer history and since i last left you we saw murray brett and perry come in the 2000 euros i spent was on james umar which looks to be a bargain 2000 euros for 19 year old center back who's technically rather able mentals are getting there with a bit of mentorship i think that should all develop and physically looking very good he's showing us three star current ability Four and a half star potential. He came in from Dungannon. Yes, Dungannon, where he's played three seasons already. So very capable of stepping into the first team, I think, if needed. And the reason I only spent that money was I just didn't feel that splashing out without scouting properly was the right thing to do. So what I've done is gone out, got the free transfers in. Anybody else now coming in because of the squad restrictions more than likely be loan signings but it means we'll keep that money in the bank for next year where we can really understand the squad understand what we need and go out splash the money on people that are going to be vastly superior to what we've got in the squad other than that let me run you down the other signings we've got Jovan malcolm that came in from west brom he was a player that was down in the national league last year can play either wing or up front then we've got mike powell mike powell is a 19 year old right winger and I think he's gonna yeah, he's gone out on loan, so we won't worry too much about that. Kelvin Harmon is another one that's come in, a young prospect, gone out on loan. Sunday Yusuf is a young player that's gonna be sat in the under twenty threes, another player with a little bit of potential, so it'd be interesting to see how he develops. Tyler Onyango was a player that I brought in initially to 
play really as a probably a ball winning midfielder. But unfortunately, I wasn't aware of the squad restrictions when I brought him in. So because he's 22 years old, he needs to be registered. And I don't think we've got a spot in the squad for him. So I'm going to try and loan him out. He's only a fringe player, so he's not expecting um, lots of football anyway. Then we move down to Leighton Stewart. He's coming in as a pressing forward. He's come in from Liverpool. Another player, two and a half star current ability, four and a half star potential. It'd be interesting to see how he develops. Harvey Nibson is the next one, another player that can play either side, attacking or down through the middle. Somebody a bit more experienced, 26 years old, was released by Bolton where he scored 25 goals in Vanarama National. Now, this is a bit of a gamble because he down in the Vanarama National. He's now stepping up to League One, but either way, he'll be a decent squad player. Ola Ewing is the next one he's come in. Can play anywhere attacking, really, down the middle. Probably going to be playing him either as a deep-line playmaker or a box-to-box -box midfielder. But 22 years old, decent physicals, decent mentals, and he's good at passing and can tackle. So he was a solid addition from Leicester. Now, the last two, I think, two of the more astute signings. Mark McGuinness, a centre-back that's coming from Arsenal. 24 years old, fairly experienced. Should be a reliable addition to the squad and Trey Coyle also coming from Arsenal can play anywhere across the attacking three is right footed so will predominantly play on the left but does give us options and versatility so with all them coming in it did drastically increase the size of the squad and I've managed to get rid of a few as you can see some loans in the making there Gavin Kilkenny was a player at us and we've moved him on permanently I just don't see him being any value to the squad managed to get just short of 100,000 for him Jordan Roberts was another one, just short of €100,000. Ability-wise, like he looks reasonable, but it was only a two and a half star, showing us a good League 2 player, so not what we were looking for, so we've moved him on. Ryan Whiteley is the next one to move on. Was our backup keeper, I've had to move him on, 25 years old, purely down to squad restrictions. So currently we have one goalkeeper in the squad, and I'm going to look to bring in a young keeper, who's more than likely going to be first choice but just somebody that can play backup would be ideal James Daly another one wasn't really what I was looking for in a player physically very good mentally very good but just doesn't have the ability so he's been moved on 130,000 euros for him and then Josh Air, another one initially I did intend to keep him around but unfortunately it was another one that suffered because of the squad restrictions 30 years old so he was moved on I think we've got better options at right back than him so with that all said, the squad looks like this, and as you can see, it's a huge squad. Still three players we're trying to move on. On Yango and Ryan Clark trying to move them out on loan. Declan McQuaid, he's got some offers in, so hopefully he'll be moving on shortly. And then Ashley Eastham, I just can't move him on. Nobody's interested. 34 years old, retiring next year. So we'll probably just sit on the bench for the rest of the year, or not even on the bench because he's unregistered. So just finally, what I want to do is come to the competitions and show you the season preview. And as you can see, we don't have anybody in the media Dream 11, but we are currently sat second place, 5-2 to two on to win the league. We're comfortably up there, Luton just come down from the championship, probably do have one of the strongest squads, so be interesting to see us chase for the title with them and that will start in the next episode so if you think i've done a good job rebuilding the squad hit the thumbs up subscribe to see our league one season kick off next time so thank you for watching and i'll see you next time <laughs>